Welcome back to our wood stove hearth project. Eric and I are doing quite a bit of work today. We are going to be tiling the heat shield area behind where our wood stove is going to sit. We have previously removed the wood stove. We ripped out the old tile that was unfinished behind us. And we also poured this new concrete slab underneath us. So that is still curing it is on day three. We figured this would be a good time to hop over to the tile. And we were choosing between two different colors here. We have an off white tile subway tiles and this one's a little bit shorter this is like a gray tile so we did make the choice to use this one we think it's going to have a better look overall so for the tile process there's a lot of math involved we've got a very handy level we've got a trowel and then we also have our tile adhesive or mortar that we're going to be using we're ready to get started and we know our first measurements so eric is going to get the wet saw fired up and get cutting that's three inches so Okay, we got a first for us today. We're using a tile saw. This is a wet tile saw, I believe they call it. And you can rent these, but Home Depot had one of these on sale. This is a rigid, so we picked it up. We plan on doing more tile in our future. And the tile we're using is a ceramic wall tile. It's three inches by 12 inches. And this, like I mentioned, this is a wet saw. So I have the reservoir filled with water. It has a certain type of blade on here. This is a seven inch blade. And our first cut is gonna be three inches. Let's see how it goes. Whoa. All right, well the first cut, it turned out pretty good, except for that end piece, it kind of like, kind of chipped. So I did some research online and what people are saying they like to do is cut halfway through the tile, pull it out, flip it over, and then finish the cut I'm gonna try that on the next one. We can still save this piece, so I'm gonna see if I can just get that little edge off real quick by flipping it over. Okay, we have a tile ready, and Errol's gonna be laying the tile today. Okay, so we're starting with one row at a time. We do not have that much confidence. And we're gonna do a quarter, a quarter tile here. We are going for a 50% offset. So that's where you have one tile. And then the other ones are 50% offset from there, like that. So we had to do a lot of math beforehand. And we're gonna start with a quarter piece right here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of mortar since I've never done this. That may be like way too much. This is a quarter inch by quarter inch by quarter inch trowel. And I know you're supposed to use it to spread it, but I wanted to use that putty knife first. So see how I don't have enough, I don't think, because it's not leaving like that perfect mark. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that's enough mortar. I think we need more, but again, we're just doing like one row at a time. So this is kind of tricky. Um, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. I think I'm gonna add a little more though. This didn't look like enough to me. I think that looks pretty good. So I've got the quarter inch tile that Eric cut and we're gonna put the nice end that didn't get cut towards the outside and I think I'm just going to put it like right on the edge there. I should probably get out some spacers too. Do you remember they said you go like down and out? I think like that. And then a little like Okay, this is a little stressful. We're doing full tiles now, and I'm using two spacers. That was Eric's recommendation for this first level so we can just make sure everything's like spot on. I think the way to do it, hon, is put it snug up against it. Push it out like we said, right? So you don't get the mortar buildup, but then you get a nice clean, it actually pushes the tile out of an inch in there. So that would be about, um, okay, so we met up with the corner and we're going to leave quite a bit of space there so the two tiles can join and have some grout in between them. We're going to do three inches and three quarters for this tile. Okay. 
Look at that, I got a perfect cut on both sides. You gotta push this thing like extremely slow. So this isn't like a wood saw where you can just buzz through it. So I'm gonna have to use some patience, but this right here is Ariel's next piece. That looks, uh, that looks good. Let's slap some mud. No, mud's drywall, sweetheart. <laughs> slap some water. We have never done anything with tile. Could you sense my hesitance? Ever. Hesitancy? So, no, this is, this is a, honestly, I'd rather be doing this than a bathroom. No, you know what I mean? I feel like we can, we can really practice and hone in our skills on this one. It's about an hour later and we have our first we have our first row laid, I guess, of tile, you would say. And I just wanted to go over a little bit of the math that we are doing and using. So first off, we have the level, which is a tremendous help. Uh, not all houses are straight, as you can imagine, especially older ones. That level basically helps us plan ahead because if you don't realize that something's unlevel and you make a tiny mistake, but then you keep going with that pattern, it's basically gonna be magnified by the time you get to the end and you may like get back and be like, whoa, that's, that doesn't look good. So we're trying to avoid that. And this house is actually built fairly straight. So we only have probably less than a quarter inch of discrepancy, shall I say, with the whole, both, both walls and the corner, which is not that bad. The one thing I had read when you're planning out these tiles, if you want to do the 50% offset is you take half of the wall that you want to tile and you basically half that measurement. So you put a tile right in the middle or the opposite, you'd put one here and one there, if you can imagine an imaginary line. So the only problem with that is that we have two different wall sizes, and when we did that, it didn't really pan out that well. I feel like our eye was gonna detect these smaller little chunks. So what Eric and I decided to do was go with the quarter and the three quarter pieces. So we've got this first whole row done, and now we're gonna start and going to be alternating with the quarter and the three quarter pieces. And I think, I think everything should look good. So if you see how that one will lay, you will still have your 50% off center as you keep going. Wish us luck and I hope it turns out good. Does this come off the concrete? Yes, no, I'll get that off, don't even worry. I'm, I'm in charge of mortar removal. What? How long have you been laying mortar? Um, years? Yeah, I was Half gonna say life. like 22 years. Holy cow. Wow. I know. I love that. What did we go with? An eighth inch gap? Eighth inch spacer? That's beautiful. You're really going to see that grout. Look at how cool that piece is. Okay, so you start in the corner. And then drag out. You drag out and down. Wow, you're a pro. That's really weird. You just naturally put it that way. More than eight, 10 inches? Eight a under? to 10. Let's measure it. The wood, the wood saw. No, we don't want that. Can I have that rag real quick? I'm feeling it. We can do this. It's going to be a slow process. I'm going to move out of the way. Errol's going to get in here. She's going to start doing the tile. I'm just going to continue working on the wet saw, but I think we're getting the hang of it. Should go smoother from now on. Oh, that's why I was wondering why my pants are a little wet. It's squirting on my pants. Do you think we're gonna have enough mortar? Serious question. Yeah, that's perfect. Do you have another piece of tile I can check with? You know what I mean? Well, we're getting better. Each row, I guess, as you call these of tile that we're putting up, they're going up faster and they're getting a little cleaner. So here we go again. Did I already cut a piece for this one? It's from squatting, isn't it? That's where it's from. I think it's from the whole thing. To me, it's from the squatting.
Does that look okay? Oh, it looks outstanding. Get under a full bucket outside, scooping it around you. How's that working for you? <laughs> Perfect, I think. Okay. Do that. It would be the easiest of them because, like, imagine ceiling and then wall. You know how you have to, like, crouch down on oh these God. corners? Ceiling? It does. Lower. Lower. <laughs> well, teamwork is the name of the game here. We are flying through this project. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's back-breaking work. You're down here, you're bent over, my back hurts, my knees hurt, same with Ariel. But it's looking like, it's looking so good, we're already like thinking of other projects we could do tile with, because we like the way it looks so much. We got this side almost completely done, minus one bottom one that we have to do, which is gonna be kind of tricky, because we're gonna have to cut the ends, and then we're also gonna have to cut the tiles like this, because it's not gonna be a full, layer on the bottom we got this side to do we got some more up there but it's going great can't complain so far and it's i mean it's looking amazing this tile is awesome one and a half inches so it's gonna be like a one inch one and a one and a quarter inch tile okay we finished our tile and we're just removing the spacers it looks awesome i could not have asked for a cleaner job so unfortunately we thought we were going to finish that first day that we started laying the tile but when we got to the bottom of one of our boxes like half of them were broken and we just needed a few more we had to make the two hour drive to the hardware store to get some more tiles we finished this area off i've got some drywall repair going on back there if you're wondering what that is and then eric skillfully cut the tiles and put that last little thin one in place right along the the base of where it meets the concrete and that was that was a little bit trickier than we had thought but it is completely done and it is beautiful it still needs grout but in the meantime we are going to actually be finishing up our concrete i think it's on like day five or six so it is ready to be finished because i troweled a little bit too soon we have had very dusty conditions in here and we want to just get rid of that so that's what we're going to get started on now Things are looking good. The powder is coming off like we anticipated. We're being a little aggressive with it because we're trying to remove the powder. Normally you wouldn't want to do that if you were going for like a beautiful smooth concrete slab finish, but we know that we can't get that. So what we're going to have happen is it's called like the salt and pepper look, but it's intentional. So we have some of the exposed aggregate, so little particles in the concrete itself. And that's just because we had to get rid of the fine powdery layer on top, which was from me troweling. And when you do that, what it does is it brings up certain particles, some of the finer particles in the concrete to the top layer. Let's work on the corners and then we're going to do some sanding with the orbital sander. Looks pretty good. We've achieved a finish that we are happy with on our concrete, so we are going to seal it. Ideally, you'd probably wait a little bit longer, but it is relatively warm in here, and Eric and I cannot wait. It is winter and we need our wood stove back. So we are using an acrylic base sealer, and I'm just gonna get started spraying it in this bottle that Eric filled up, and we're gonna use a microfiber cloth. If that doesn't work, I may end up switching to a roller. 
first layer, so I don't think we'll have any problems with it. But see, like if you went too thick and didn't rub that in, I okay. imagine you could get. I would imagine you could get some more. But if you just take it out like this, no. We have to let it dry in between coats. I'm not certain how many we're gonna do, maybe just a few until we get that look that we like. It is the wet look. So we wanted that specifically, we're going for a darker concrete. I actually love it either way. I like long, light concrete or dark concrete. I think we're both really big concrete fans, but this is turning out pretty good and it has like a, I don't know, like a sheen, like almost like a glossy look to it. It forms a little membrane on the concrete. So looks good. Okay, now we wait. Right there. <laughs> well, this is it. This is gonna be our fourth and final coat. It looks awesome. Putting the sealer on there. Absolutely beautiful. It's got this nice wet look and it actually has like a coating on it now, but we're gonna rub this in and we're gonna let it sit until tomorrow, dry up. And then we're almost there. We're working on the grout next. our beautiful tile job. Gosh, yeah, holy cow. Let me just dip it in. I'm gonna need a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I think you could use a lot. No! Well, we're grouting. I think it's going pretty good. And we used eighth inch spacers on this tile. So there's a pretty big gap in there and grout comes in all different types and colors and everything. And this is a sanded grout and we're using a color called platinum. And believe it or not, the color grout you use is really gonna change the look of the tile. I'm pretty sure we picked an awesome color. I think it's gonna turn out great. Let's see if we can get a good layer on there. Oh, it keeps falling off. Good thing children are watching this. I feel like you want to eat or something. Totally just dropped a huge chunk right there. This color grout is awesome. We were reading that the darker the grout, if you have a light tile, it's really gonna make things pop and draw attention to the tile themselves, individual tiles. Whereas if you do more of like a neutral color to the tile, it will make it blend in more. So like if you had black tile and you use black grout versus white. This grout sets up fast, so it's sanded grout, so it almost feels like a rough sandpaper on the wall. And what we're doing now is using a damp sponge to kind of remove the excess from like the tile itself. And then it's kind of pushing the grout in a little bit for us. And what seems to be working the best is I go over it real lightly, not putting a lot of pressure, and it gets it wet. And then as I come through, like on the next round through, it seems to actually be removing it now that it's soaked. So you're really starting to see what the end product is gonna look like, and I'm loving it. Ba 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 ba. See my side? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay, we got our final wipe down completed tomorrow we're going to come back and kind of buff anything out if there's any of the remnants on the tile it looks really good i think eric did a great job we're going to try to get some other work done that we can get done like the shelf that we're working on we have a nice little birch slab that we want to put 
up here. This project's been hard because it's kind of like a waiting game. We have to wait for everything to dry. We need to wait 24 hours for this to dry before we can seal it. And then we hope, we really, really hope that we can actually have the wood stove back in here tomorrow. Can I set it down for a second? Yeah. I'm gonna get our joints. This is our little birch shelf that we built. We had a little, just regular store-bought lumber shelf there before, and we had this beautiful birch piece that we wanted to use that we bought four years ago. So we cut 45 degree angles at it. It's got a live edge on it. And we bought a pretty cool little tool that we're excited about, and it's called a pocket hole jig. Usually what I do is I just stick my drill in a piece of wood and put it at an angle and try to get it the best I could. But we're gonna do it a little better this time. So I got this little jig, it came with a bit for driving the screws in, came with the drill bit also, and I'm on the back side of our little shelf. We're gonna drill the holes basically at an angle. We're gonna drive these pocket hole screws in, and hopefully it works, and we'll be able to bolt it up on this little bracket. over it looks good. and they didn't go through the other side whoa it looks really good it's pretty good you want to stick it up there and see what it looks like check it out that's the front that's the little pocket holes on the back i feel like we could go into the furniture business now this is looking good let's put it up here and see what it looks like that's gonna be the shelf beautiful oh whoa I think you did a perfect job. Look at that, that is spot on. Okay, I think we did pretty good today. We got a lot done and tomorrow's the day. We're getting that wood stove in. Okay, we are shutting this down. This ventless propane heater has been heating our house for about a week and a half. We only intended for this project to take a week. I don't know what we were thinking because it took well over that and it's chaotic in here. It's a small house, so things are just not where they should be. We pretty much buttoned up this morning. We sealed the grout, we buffed out the tile, we've got our shelf in there and I know we're ready for that wood stove. Both of us are glad that it wasn't too cold this last week and a half. We only used about 15 gallons or so of propane, but I imagine it would have been a lot more if it was as cold as it typically is in the month of November. The dogs are mad too, because Bannett usually sits by the fire and Bo has been kind of claiming this middle bed. So Bannett's been stashed over in the coldest corner. Our house usually runs like 75 to 85. And although this thing is great, it's not keeping our house that warm. We don't want to burn through that much propane. So we are totally ready to get that wood heat back in here. One final little step here. We're making something called a plumb bob, and I have it on the exact center of the chimney pipe up there at the ceiling. And then I'm gonna put this little weight down, and we're gonna use gravity, and that's gonna tell us exactly where the center of the wood stove needs to go. So, get it to a good height here. Do you want help setting it down? I think we're just gonna set it down, and then we'll move it by hand. We can move it by hand? I don't know. Oh my hand. gosh, I doubt it. There we go. 
Oh yeah, we got this. Come on, okay. This is extremely light stove. It's it crazy. Um, I feel like it's tweaked. See your corner. It's a little bit off. I believe it's this leg. Do you want me to get like a small a washer? A really small, like a little tiny one would be fine. Should I put mine on yet? Yep. All right, one last thing before we get this bad boy fired up, and that is cleaning the glass. We burn spruce, there's a lot of creosote. This thing gets extremely dirty, it's really hard to clean. Dipping a paper towel in ash with water just doesn't cut it on this thing. The only thing that works for us is bend this easy off oven cleaner, spray it on, I let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes depending on how bad it is. Hit it with a razor blade, then finish it off with a paper towel. You got a nice, beautiful, clean glass. Let's get this thing fired up. Well, everything is getting back to normal in here. We're all getting into our old routine. Got the wood stove all fired up. It's sitting at 600 degrees right now. That thing is cooking. The house is heated up to the temperature that we like. We got our couch put back. The dogs are cozy. We got dinner cooking. This project was definitely hard. Anytime you tackle something that you haven't done before, which every single aspect of this we had not done before, it's always extremely difficult. There was frustrations, there was happiness, but all in all, I think we're extremely happy with the way this thing turned out. It's not even winter yet. It's middle of November. So we have this beautiful area to work with and we're really looking forward to using it this winter.